Uh, okay, so if you watch the uh, video that we put live about the power cables and stuff with this guy right here and all the connectors, I showed you how this card, the RTX 4090 Strix from ASUS Republic of Gamers would not boot on this Tai Chi system, which is an AMD 7950X system. So today we're just gonna sort of investigate this and see if we can get it to boot on something anyways. Due to its AMD Ryzen 6000 series processor, IPS QHD Plus 240Hz screen, and RX 6800M discrete graphics, the Voyager A1600 from Corsair is a no-compromise mobile computing powerhouse. Voyager also features Slipstream wireless integration for Corsair Slipstream devices, Cherry MX mechanical keys with Capellix per-key RGB programming, and integrated Stream Deck software, the Voyager A1600 from Corsair changes the way you do mobile gaming and creation. To see the complete feature list, follow the sponsored link in the description below. Um, something else too is it's interesting because this booted just fine on our 12th gen 12900K. Um, ironically, I don't have, I guess I have my 10th gen system, but it would probably boot fine on that if it booted fine on 12th gen. I don't have another AMD system I can throw it in. I don't know if it's an AMD thing or if it's a brand new AMD thing. I do believe it to be a vBIOS conflict in some way with the BIOS on the motherboard because as I've showed before, the FE will boot perfectly fine and it's when the power is turned off, it has the memory train, so this is what 15 is, and sidebar, you'll actually see this on every single 7000 series AMD motherboard. You should see a code 15 when booting for the first time, first power up or repower, because that's memory training. But see, GeForce lit up, fans are turning. Um, we should end up getting an image, there it is right there. So one thing I haven't tried since that video, because I ended up doing our power cable testing with the Founders Edition card, is whether or not now that I've got the Founders Edition card posted on this system, will that somehow trigger the ASUS card? So I'm legitimately um, curious about that. So now that it's booted, I'm just gonna shut it down, flip off power, switch the card, and see. I, I feel like this kind of video is important because I talk to you guys in my talking heads about ideology of adopting first gen hardware <clears throat> or the first runs of any new generation hardware. And this is the kind of thing that you can expect. I saw quite a few people actually saying, I'm gonna put a 7950X with the 4090 and it's gonna be a B system. Well, as you can see, depending on when, you might not have a system that posts at all. Oh, and by the way, um, earlier today I had to drive to Orange County and actually drove by Micro Center. Shout out to all six of you who were in line today to get one. Actually, the line was longer than six people. It was probably like 20, 25 people in line to get one. Stark contrast from what the 30 series launch looked like. So clearly Nvidia hopefully receives the message loud and clear that one, y'all are waiting for AMD or two, it's just too damn expensive or three, it's just not worth it. I just, it actually kind of brought a smile to my face. It's like, you know what? That's how you vote. You vote with your wallet. But we still make videos about it because we have to. Otherwise you can't vote with your wallet if you don't know anything about it. Right? What if we were like, it's a thousand percent faster? Well, then that's actually a good deal for that money, but it's not. So here we go again, code 15, only because I flipped off the power supply. This, I like this, because this, this sort of alleviates post problems that are memory related if it trains every time power cycles. Now, this is the thing that makes me think it's a VBIOS issue. Fans are turning, RGB is lit up, which is something I experienced every time, but check it out, no image, no image whatsoever. But if I hook up this HDMI cable, to the CPU output, which is a HDMI output built into the motherboard, because remember Ryzen 7000 series does have an eGPU or an internal GPU built in. Through HDMI, it'll post to that. The only reason we'd be getting a video coming out of the CPU means that when it does its post, it doesn't sense a GPU. So it doesn't send any information to the GPU, which means they're not talking. So I feel like it's actually power cycling right now because we're retraining again. But let's just go ahead and make sure that this gets to the BIOS, or not the BIOS, but the operating system. And when it does, I can just hit power. It'll shut down normally, which means it booted right past the graphics card. There it is. 97, 98. Now we got USB initialization. We have a white light off. This is now temperature. We are now sitting in the OS. It's now loading everything. That's why you're seeing temperatures pop up. We have zero video coming out of this card. So I can just hit power right now and we'll see it shut down. And I like how it loads up to shut down. That's temp right there. 
<laughs> the fans were like, no, I don't want to, I want to live. What the? What? That's a first. I let this sit on here for like 30 minutes last time. So let's talk about what happened prior to this in the previous video. When trying to get this to work, I booted to the OS using the, the iGPU from HDMI. We went to device manager, and when we go to device manager, display adapters, it did not say NVIDIA GeForce RTX 4090, it just basically said like this, Microsoft Basic Display Adapter. And then when you right click, hit properties, you can go to right here. This device is not working properly because Windows cannot load the drivers required for this device, code 31. What we were getting on this card, and you can tell which one it is because if you go to details, uh, and then go down here to hardware IDs, this will actually tell you where the product, like where it is, right? And it was saying that Windows could not identify the device. Okay, and that was with ethernet plugged in or Wi-Fi or whatever, but there was no driver installed yet. So what's supposed to happen with Windows is when you install a graphics card that it can't make heads or tails of because it's too new for the drivers to exist, it's supposed to load just a basic VGA driver to give you just graphics, but it, it's not intelligent. It doesn't, it doesn't know what it is. It just gets you an image. And that wasn't happening with this card. So when we were booted on the iGPU, I then put in the FE and it worked fine. As a basic VGA uh, device, like I just described, should have happened. Installed the driver. This is now the first time I've tried to boot this graphics card on this system since doing that video. So what I think happened right now, I believe the motherboard BIOS is still not properly talking to the graphics card in terms to initialize it early enough to be able to get like a BIOS screen or a splash screen, but Windows identified it because the driver was already installed. So now what I need to do is shut this down. And I wanna see now, do we get a splash screen? If we still don't get a splash screen, that's still a problem because it means we won't have access to our BIOS if we need to make changes, unless we start doing the method of plugging in another cable because uh, some motherboards will have an HDMI and display port out. This particular motherboard, although an expensive motherboard, only has HDMI out, so I can't just unplug this and put it, put it in there. It's stupid. It should have it for the price. See, now it won't go code 15, or it will make me a liar. I don't know why it's retraining memory every time. That's, that's new behavior, because that was only happening prior to installing this card whenever I would turn off the power supply or reseat the RAM. What I'm looking for here is a video initialization. Because I want to see if I can get to the BIOS. Because that's important. If we can't get to the BIOS, it's a problem. And I am on the latest BIOS for this motherboard that's available. Okay, we're in the BIOS right now. Where we were, that's what A0 is. Oh, there it is. So do you see how it's taking so long to initialize that we're not seeing the, the ASRock splash screen? There's still something that needs to happen. I think in a later BIOS with this, this Tai Chi, it'll probably fix itself. Um, there might even end up being a V BIOS available for this graphics card. See, with EVGA cards, and this is one of the reasons why I really miss EVGA being on the market for graphics cards, is when you would load PX1 or Precision X, if it detects an EVGA graphics card, it immediately does a firmware check. If the firmware is out of date, it will tell you immediately like, hey, there's a vBIOS available for your graphics card. Hit OK to apply it. And then it will automatically flash the EEPROM to the latest vBIOS to fix this sort of stuff. This is the kind of stuff that doesn't exist with the other brands. The other AIBs are not doing this level of like, hey, let's give the best support that we possibly can to our end users. Doesn't exist. So let's see now. Now that it's initialized, we should get an ASRock logo. So memory training, again, why is it doing it? This is, this is different behavior with this graphics card. I wanna put the FE back on now and see if the code 15 of memory training goes away every time, or goes away with it. Cause this was not happening with this card on there. There's A0. That's where the logo should be showing up right there. 02, 57, 50. okay, we're now loading Windows. So we still have nothing. 
We have a USB initialization, there it is, see? I don't like that it's taking this long. Now I know there's a ton of people out there right now going, no, my computer does the same thing, and it'll happen with 30 series, 20 series, 10 series, AMD cards, Intel rigs, AMD rigs. This is specifically vBIOS stuff. Um, let's now test it with the FE card, because I want to show you how it's supposed to behave. I'm happy that it's working now, because like I said, this is the card that I know clocks farther than this one. And if I want to try and get on that leaderboard and play around, I need the Strix working. But I have a few other secret weapons coming that should help. You know me. Very rarely do I say, do you know who I am? I never say that. But I go, do you want your card on the top of the leaderboard? And they're like, yes. We do. So we gave it to Vince. No, I'm kidding. Yeah. Yeah, so we hired Vince. <laughs> All right, the FE is installed. It's going to train memory again. It should because I powered off the power supply. There it goes. But what we'll get with this card is we will get an actual blue light and an ASRock logo to show up. It's normally, it would say ASRock right there. There it is. See? That's when you go, oh, I got to go to BIOS. You start. Do, 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 do. Or it doesn't go to BIOS. No, 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 it was probably the memory timing thing. One of the things it does when it's, when it's retraining memory is it starts playing with the timings. If it crashes, it reboots, re retests timing, changes the settings, and then boots again. That's normal behavior. This is what I explained when I said when you first start doing brand new stuff with 7th seventh, seventh gen or 7000 series, it's scary because it can take like 10 reboots sometimes to get to the BIOS. Just let it go. Be Elsa. Let it go. Okay? Anyway. There it is, see? Now we got the text down here, which we didn't before because it crashed before that. So there's our splash screen. Now we'll get to the BIOS, there it is. That's the behavior we're expecting and that's not what we're getting with this guy right here. Don't know why. I feel like if I were to take the ROG X670E board I have sitting right over there, it would work perfectly fine because that's the ecosystem which they've developed and I bet you they've cross-tested all of this already to make sure it would work. And if that one doesn't work out of the box, I bet you there's a VBIOS to make it work. So, there we go, running 6,000 megahertz. It pushed the end core to 1.3. But that is the behavior that is expected. The, the only other things I did off screen, which I mentioned in my previous video is, um, because, my, I don't think many people are going to have different 4090s laying around to just start throwing in there to see which one boots. Uh, our BIOS updates for the motherboard. But again, this is brand new motherboard, brand new CPU, brand new memory with the AMD Expo settings enabled, and brand new graphics card that literally is now going through rigorous field testing because of all the people are going to be adopting it with all of the different combinations of hardware out there bringing up these issues that will eventually get looked at. So look, we even have our little spinning wheel of windows now because we don't have any of that with the, with the ASUS card, remember? All right, there you go. It's kind of a quick and easy one to give you some food for thought here. Man, I tell you what, it's, a, it's, a, it's like I don't want to say don't pair the combo because it's a pretty badass combo, but just know. When I, when I talked about the fact that early adopters are the ones that bleed the most with cutting edge, just know you're the true beta testers in all of this, you know? There's only so many configurations that they can test for in a lab. They have hundreds of combos in there, but there's way more than hundreds of combos that exist. And you're gonna find those outliers and those one-offs. And I guarantee you someone's gonna try putting one of these on like a 6700K or something, and it's gonna be some weird combo that causes some issue no one would have ever thought of because no one in their right mind should ever run that combo. Anyway, thanks for watching, guys. I uh, hope this taught you something. I was half expecting this not to boot, but when I said I was hoping that by putting the founder's card on, it would somehow, and, and Phil was even joking around, I was like, what, was it gonna like give the kick, like a big kick to the system and just have it suddenly start working? I'm like, well, it could. And clearly it did because of the driver. The driver got Windows to, to initialize the card because I, was, I let this card sit on there for more than 20 minutes last time with no image, with Windows booted because there was no driver, nothing to initialize it. So it literally was like, oh, so that's what you are. Oh, okay, I was wondering. You kind of look like that guy, but you're a lot fatter, so I wasn't sure. You know, there you go. All right, thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one. Fat shape of graphics, I did. <laughs>